Hello, everybody. Uh, tonight's uh, attendance was a total sellout. Gate was 2.06 million. Attendance was 15,862. Um, the, uh, where she got him here? Okay, fight of the night was Mendez and Volkanovski. And then uh, the performance of the night went to Amanda Nunez and Ryan Hall. They all won $50,000. Congrats. John. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty incredible night. Yeah. I, I wonder if you personally, you know, after everything that went down and, and all that we had to deal with this past week, I mean, do you take personal satisfaction when you end up having a night like this where you kind of stick it to everybody, I guess? Yeah. I love sticking it to everybody. So, yes, it was a very satisfying night to me. Um, it, it's unbelievable how when we go into, you know, a week like this, um, just the, the, the backlash and negativity and bullshit that you have to read and all this stuff that goes on dur during the week of a fight like this. I saw this, you know, I, I get it for you guys that it's, um, there's an ocean of Twitter tweets and Instagrams and all these things. And I, I guess saying stupid things sometimes makes you stand out. Uh, what's his name tonight? It's that idiot's name that I can't stand. Darren Ravel tweets out, the fuck does Darren Ravel know about fighting, number one? Okay, let's, let's start with that. And he says, uh, the UFC got destroyed tonight because Chris Cyborg lost and Amanda Nunez won and she's not marketable at all and fucking, you know? It's just like, I, I, listen, I'm pretty resilient to this dumb shit, but oh my God. Anyway. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. Well, let's talk about Amanda Nunes. I mean, what a moment that was. Um, talk about just kind of what you thought about that fight and what you want to see going forward for her. Now she's got two belts, and, you know, it's tough to defend in two weight classes, but there's not a lot at 145. Yeah. So, you know, what do yeah. you want to see for her? Um, you know, I said it for a long time now leading up to this fight. This is the fight that had to happen. This fight had to happen. It was the fight to make. Um, and and this, is, this is the type of fight that builds legacies and, and, and you realize, you have to find out who, who is the best in the world. We were able to do that um, tonight and it was an incredible fight and look at Amanda Nunes. And you think Amanda Nunes isn't gonna be a star after this? I fucking guarantee it, I promise you that. You know, place went crazy for her. And uh, I don't know what's next, Tuesday. We'll be back in the office and we'll, uh, we'll have a meeting and we'll figure out what's next for her. Ask about John Jones as well. He looked very, very dominant returning tonight. Uh, he made it clear right away. He said DC, threw the name out there. Um, are you interested in that fight? I mean, it seems like it would be one of the biggest fights you could possibly make. And, and I wonder if you're interested in making it. And would you want to do it at 205 or would you want to do it at heavyweight? So I was talking to Cormier during the Jones fight. And uh, he's all fired up, you know. Um, he was obviously uh, very angry this week leading into this fight. And, uh, you know, there was talk from his camp about him retiring without another fight, and maybe he was just going to fight one more fight. It, it sounds to me like Cormier's ready to fight two or three more fights before he thinks about hanging it up. And you know me, I, I'm always the first to say when it's time for somebody to retire, Cormier's the man. It is not time for Cormier to retire. There's, there's big fights out there for him that people care about um, and, and legacy type stuff, like we were saying about Amanda and Cyborg. So. Um, I'm happy about it. Is he open to fighting Jones? I mean, I know oh, he's yeah. pissed. I, I listen, to, these guys, will, Cormier will fight anybody. You know Cormier. Cor Cor Cormier hates Jones so bad. He was on a rampage this week, and he, he was being a bit of a drama, drama mama this week. But uh, I don't blame him. They hate each other. When you hate somebody that bad, it brings the worst out in you. It does. Just two more quick questions. Uh, BJ Penn. Did you have a chance to talk to him after, after the fight tonight? And, and what was his mindset? What is he thinking? I didn't. I didn't see BJ. BJ's a legend in this sport. You know, he, he went down to Brazil, trained hard for this thing, got into great shape. The camp was raving about him. Um, he got caught in a submission tonight. BJ Penn um, is one of the legends of the sport and, and, and helped build this company. I would love to see BJ retire. BJ Penn has nothing left to prove. 
You know, <clears throat> I say it all the time, fighting is a young man's game. This is not for, for, for older men. BJ is a multiple time world champion in multiple divisions and, and he's got nothing to prove. People love him and he's a legend and he's done it all and there's nothing left to do, in my opinion. And Daniel, last one for me. Uh, at the last pay-per-view, there was a teaser video that seemed to show like a new championship belt uh, that, that was dated 1229, you know, tonight. Yeah. Hey, those, those belts look the same to me. What, what yeah. was that about? Yeah. What, what, what happened? Oh, the, the shit show that went on this week, you know what I mean? We felt it wasn't the right time to do it. We were going to do it in Vegas and, and, and do it in Vegas. But um, we're going to do it in Brooklyn then. We're going we're gonna to officially release the new belt. So you have the, uh, the classic you know, belts that they, uh, that, that Meyerowitz used to give out and we gave out for the first couple of fights. Then during, we'll call it the Fertitta era, we, we had those belts. And then now we have a new belt for, 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 for the new era starting on ESPN and, and um, all the other things that we're working on right now. I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you. And this is exciting, not just for me, my staff, the fighters and everybody else. The stuff that we are working on right now that's going to happen in the next couple of years with ESPN, things that we're doing in-house and all these changes that we're making. This is, uh, this is a game changer for the sport. It's going to be big for everybody involved. What is next for Alexander Gustafsson, do you think? Where does he go from here? I don't know. You know, this, this is one of those situations where he needs to go home, take some time off, spend some time with his family, and then figure out what he wants next. Is it possible to get a fourth title shot in the future or...? Well, it depends on what he does from here on out, you know. He's got a couple fights to win before he even starts talking about being back in the pitcher for a title shot. What do you make of the, the fight him against Jones? Yeah, listen, they both had a lot of time off, and they were both coming in rusty. And um, I, I, th I saw that, you know, when you look at the fight early, Gustafson looked good. And uh, he was getting to Jones, and, and uh, then he got kicked in the shin. And you could tell that his, he got hurt with that leg kick that, that John hit him with. And then uh, I'm sure he went I don't know this for fact, but I'm sure he went back to the corner. And they said, his legs are hurt. Go out there and shoot on him and take him down and try to finish the fight. I'm assuming that's what happened. I don't know. But it makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, um I wanted to ask you about Jones and how he approached the fight. It seemed like in the first two rounds, he, I, I tweeted, I said, he looks maybe more like Mayweather than the old John Jones, you know, being staying on the outside and kicking and just scoring points. And then in the third round, it seemed like it became the John Jones that we had known for so many years. Did you see that? And why do you think, was it just the rust that would require him to take a couple rounds before he got into that? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. You guys got to ask him that when he comes out here. But yeah, I agree. I think he had a slow start. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know if he was just taking his time and pacing himself. He's got to go five rounds with Gustafson, who's tough and, and you know, can definitely go five rounds himself. Um, try, tried to bust him up the best he could and then went in for the kill when he, took, when he hurt his leg and shot on him. And do you feel like there's any chance that he, you know, we're starting to, not that he's declining, but we're, you know, as a slow, you know, he's not the same guy that he was when he was 27 or whatever. Is there any chance that we're seeing that now? That's what this is? That's always possible. I don't think we saw it here tonight in this fight. Because, um, you know, not a bad game plan in the way that this thing played out for him now that it's over and he won. But we have to see from here on out. You know, the big question about John Jones is this. He made it to this fight. This fight needed to happen. He did not test positive for a PED. All, you know, we've been through all that shit last week, we know. Now what needs to happen is John Jones needs to pass his drug test that the California State Athletic Commission is taking. And, and honestly, off the top of my head right here, I don't know if they're testing for recreational drugs or what the deal is. Um, but John Jones needs to stay on the straight and narrow, stay out of trouble, stay in the gym, I would love to keep him busy this year um, with all the great things that we have going on right now. And we'll find out where John Jones is as, as far as timing, age, you know, all these other things. Uh, one other question about the heavyweights or, or the light heavyweights. Uh, is Brock completely out of the picture now? Is that no longer an option? No, he's not. He's not out of the so picture. There still is a chance that you could sign him. Absolutely. Okay. What, what has been the holdup? Well, I think seems, he's already under contract with me. Well, I mean, what is, it's seeming like there's been, you know, it's looked. Yeah, so we, we, we were talking about it, and then he ended up 
signing a new deal with WWE. What I think happens is, you know, he's in a very unique position because he can play this thing between UFC and, and, and WWE, and, and they get right down to the wire, and I think Vince throws so much money at him that uh, he says, all right, <clears throat> I'll do it again. Because this is here no matter what. When he's ready, he can come in here and fight, and he's going to make a shitload of money here too. So it makes sense. Oops. I'm assuming that's what's going on. Who would you like better for Brock? One, if he one, fights, one of the things that you guys know about me is I don't wait for anybody. I'm, I'm not fucking waiting around for anybody. So I'm, I'm rolling with the business. Guy doesn't want to fight this year? It's all good. It doesn't matter who you are, how big you are, what your deal is. You don't want to fight? Do your thing. When you're ready to fight, you come back and talk to me, and, and, and we'll figure something out. Who would so, be better, him or DC? Or Jones or uh, DC against They're Brock? both good. Those are both good fights. I think those are, I think Jones, DC, and Stipe are all three good fights uh, for, for Cormier if Cormier wants to do three more fights. And if I could ask you a couple about Amanda, do you feel like, you know, beating Valentina, beating uh, Ronda, beating Misha Tate, and now beating Chris? She's the best ever. She's the best ever? How, how can you deny it? You can't deny that she's the best ever. That's what this fight was for. You know, this fight was to find out. But if you look at her resume and who she's beat, she's the best ever. You can't, no, nobody can dispute that. You can try and you can say some stupid shit, but she's the best ever. And, and lastly about her, can you quantify like her punching power? Because I, I, don't, I don't know that we've ever seen a woman fighter that punched the way she punches. I agree. I agree. And, and the other thing was one of her big things going into this fight, which Cyborg talked about a lot. She's like, I need nine months. I need to put weight on. She's like, I'm going to go fight this chick. This chick's going to come in at 165 pounds. I need to put more weight on or whatever. I don't necessarily always believe in that. Uh, you know, when you put more weight on, it slows you down. You, you know, you're not used to carrying that kind of weight for five rounds. The list goes on and on of reasons that I don't think that's absolutely necessary. But she looked damn good tonight. She looked strong. Not only was she dropping bombs, she was taking big shots, too, and walking right through them like it was nothing. So maybe there is something to it. Is it that's a big thing for GSP, too. Remember? GSP always said, I'm not going up to 85 unless I have the time to put the weight on the right way and, and all that stuff. I'm not, I, haven't been all, I always haven't been a believer in it, but it seems to work. And what the hell do I know? Dana, Dana over here. Yep. Hey. Were you stunned in the fashion of, of which Cyborg lost tonight? Yeah. I, I mean, listen, I, I, some of the guys that I talked to this week, you guys, I, said, I picked this to be the fight of the night. I thought it was going to be the fight of the night. And um, it obviously went the way that I thought it would go, but I thought it would be that way, but much longer. I thought those two were going to, because those two didn't waste any time. They went out and started blasting from the, from the minute the bell rang. And that's what I expected. And I expected that to go on for a while until somebody started to get tired or somebody got clipped. Yeah. Um, it's like the, 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 the um, mendez Volkanovsky fight was exactly the way I thought it would be, except it didn't start that fast. I thought it would start right away. It took a minute. But I expected that fight to go that way. And one of them was going to get. And when you're sitting there watching this, you can kind of feel the wave in the, the arena of everyone getting fired up. Yeah. Are you thinking like, holy shit, she's going to end it right here, like everybody else was thinking? Yeah. Yeah, it was. I mean, the roof came off that place when that fight ended. It was, you know, it was as exciting a, a fight as you'll ever see. And, and, and what makes it even bigger are the stakes. You know, you have two of the baddest women fighting to see who the baddest is, both world champions in two different weight classes, and they come out and start bombing like that. It's just, there's nothing more fun. You couldn't ask for anything better in and, 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 and that type of a fight with what was at stake. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Daniel, so if I can just uh, get you to clarify, uh, Alexander Gustafsson could potentially get a fourth chance depending on his next couple of fights. Well, I, you, you, we have to see what happens. First of all, sitting me sitting here right now, I don't know what Gustafsson wants to do. I don't even know what the guy wants to do. Have you spoken to him? He, no. I, I, in the octagon, I saw him and asked him if he was okay, but that's it. Uh, you know, I don't know what he wants to do. I'm sure he wants to go home, be with his family, and relax for a while, and then he can figure out what's next. When we do figure out what's next, you know, he's got to get out there. I don't know how many times he's going to fight this year, who he's going to fight, if he's going to win, how he's going to win, any of those things. There's so many, so many factors that go into where he ends up. And uh, you've mentioned previously that you're hoping to see Connor return sometime this year. Do you have any idea against who? There's been talk about four years. Well, unfortunately... 
we haven't gone before the Nevada State Athletic Commission yet. That still hasn't happened. I don't know what the hell is going to go on until that happens. In an ideal world, who would you want to see him against? In my world? I mean, I think everybody. I'm like Connor to fight next weekend uh, and the weekend after that. But we'll see. I, I don't know what's going to happen with Nevada. And then, you know, if you look at what we've got right now, you got Connor hopefully coming back in the summer or sometime around there. Um, we got Habib who will come back after his suspension. You got Tony in there now. Max Holloway could possibly move up in, 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 in that weight division. There's so many great things that can happen in that division right now, but none of it can even begin to play out or even begin to think about it until this stuff's done in Nevada. And uh, finally, uh, Alex Volkanovsky, he was obviously on top of him, you know, over the moon after his victory. He meet, beat the number five guy. Uh, you know, Moicano didn't make weight uh, when he was supposed to. How far is Volkanovski from a title shot? Yeah, I don't, listen, he beat a real guy tonight. You know, beat, beating Mendez is a big deal. I have a lot of respect for that guy. He's been in some incredible fights. I mean, his, his fight with Jose Aldo in Brazil was one of the best fights I've ever seen. And, um, yeah, beating him is a big deal. So he's in a very good position right now, and we'll see, we'll see what happens. Thank you. Dana over here. This was the last show from the Televisa TV contract in Mexico. You guys are starting with Fox Sports again uh, next month. What are your expectation, expectations uh, for next year for Mexico? Cain Velasquez just announced he's coming back. And uh, I don't know, it's been talked about a contender series. Probably coming back with a pay-per-view because it hasn't happened since uh, 2015, last time Cain Velasquez fought in Mexico. I'm not sure what your question was, but um, yes, I, I mean, I say it all the time. Mexico is very important to us. I've, I've always been focused on Mexico. Um, Cain Velasquez is coming back um, in a great fight with Francis Ngannou. And, um, you know, we, we, we got to see how he does, and, and then we'll go from there. And, and uh, are you asking when we're coming back to Mexico? Yeah, is it possible to come back with a pay-per-view depending on King? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or absolutely. Or Gastel, a absolutely. champion, I don't know, some, some yes. Mexican fighter. Yes, sir. Fighter. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Dana. Uh, hi. Hi. Here, over here. Hi. Hi. So you said that uh, if Gossesson won, uh, you were uh, maybe going to Sweden. Uh, is that still a possibility in the next uh, future? Yeah. Yeah, we can still... Listen, you've been to the Sweden events, right? Uh -huh. They're ridiculous. They're amazing. The fans over there are incredible. We sell that place out every time we go. It's, it's, it's so fun. Yes. Yes, we can end up back in Sweden, even though he didn't win. Do you have any idea when? I do not, sir. Uh, so this is a, obviously a sad day for Swedish MMA fans, but David Tamer has been racking up win after win. When can we expect him to get a crack at the top 15? Yeah, no, that's a great question. That's a great question and a fair question. He looks incredible, when, um, and I don't know. We'll figure that out. Do you think he deserves it? Do you think what? Do you think... Do you think Could we have a worse place for a press conference right now? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. It's like we're at the airport. Do you think uh, David Tamer deserves a top 15 next? Sure. And uh, lastly, Jack Hermansen looked uh, great in his last couple of fights. Uh, do you think he is ready for that next step? Who did you say? Jack Hermanson, the yeah. Joker. I don't know. For, for me to answer these questions right now, I mean, I got to be in the room. There's so, when we do the matchmaking, there's so many things that are involved. Timing, where is it? Who's hurt? Who's available? Um, <clears throat> how many of the top 15 guys already have a fight? There's a lot of things that go into deciding who's next. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. Uh, here? Yep. Over here. This Hi. Yeah, I'm sorry. I may be uh, not an expert in everything, but I didn't understand quite the thing about John Jones and the California Commission about possibly testing for r whatever. Well, recreation. so here's what happens. <clears throat> so he, all the stuff, you know all the stuff that happened before yeah. this, the testing and all the stuff. They tested him in California, too. But there's drug tests the night of the fight, too. You get drug tested tonight or whenever it is. You know, so he has to pass those drug tests too. The difference is when you're in competition, they usually test for recreational drugs too, marijuana, cocaine, and all these different things. John Jones' future 
depends on a lot of different drug testing. This guy needs to keep passing drug tests. He needs to stay clean, stay straight, keep training, stay in the gym, keep winning, and uh, this guy can completely turn his life around. Okay, so what would happen if he didn't pass a test after tonight? I'm, I'm going to kill myself. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't want that to happen, sorry. Huh? I wouldn't want that to happen. Well, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Some other people in here would. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Hey, Dana. Mm -hmm. Over to your right. Uh, of, all, of all the things that John Jones is good at, the many things he's good at, is the best thing his ability to block everything else out and, and get in there and fight? Of all the things that are going on, yeah. it's, it's, it's uncanny. Yeah, you know what's fascinating about this guy? When you think about him as a fighter, he's one of the strongest people you've ever seen, and physically, mentally, emotionally. All the, all the drama that was going on this week and, you know, not being able to fight in Nevada and all that stuff, he really did keep it together and, and you know I've, I've seen many many fighters crack under a lot less pressure um, you know and the thing is with the guy if he can get his personal life together who knows what this guy could accomplish knows what he could do Chris Cyborg is going to her final contract uh, final fight on her contract now is, is a rematch does that make sense she hasn't she hasn't lost since 2005 do you, do you go right back to Cyborg Nunez too I don't think you do no no I mean you know, it was a pretty convincing win. Sure. You know. So what do you do with Cyborg then at that point? I, again, I gotta, I gotta get back in the in the lab and figure it out. But we'll we'll we'll, we'll come up with something for her. Uh, a couple of last things, uh, Kat Singano, that that whole situation where she got uh, a toe in the eye. Have you ever yeah. seen? Have you ever no, it's seen pretty that crazy. I've heard of it happening, but I never saw it before. Um, unfortunate, and one of those just. Wacky. If you think about uh, an MMA fight between two really good MMA fighters and the kicks and the punches and the elbows and all the things that fly around, it really is a, a very unique and odd injury. But I've heard of it happening. It happened to uh, uh, the coach there. Winkle, John. Winkle, yeah. Should, should that be treated like an eye poke? Like, like, a, like, a, you know, maybe <laughs> like a... I don't know what you'd call it. <laughs> it's, it's actually a toe poke, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. It, it, it happens so infrequently, it's, it's tough to make a call on that. What's that? Yeah. So, apparently, he, yeah. yeah, you heard him. Yeah. Uh, last couple of things, Dana. Uh, Ryan Hall, what, what do you make of Ryan Hall? You know, he, he doesn't fight for two years, comes in, submits BJ Penn with a heel hook. I, I don't incredible. know. It's, uh, it's incredible. Crazy. I, I mean... The one thing that I liked about this, and I, I, you know, and I don't want to piss BJ off because I love BJ, but you know, I, I would like to see BJ retire. So in setting up this fight, it set up the perfect fight where it's a submission match between two incredible submission guys. Um, and for him to submit BJ the way that he did as fast as he did, it's a big deal for that kid, you know. And I'm sure, like like Rogan said, I'm sure he grew up idolizing BJ Penn. So to be able to pull that off is it's incredible. Hall said he's having a hard time finding fights. No one wants to fight him. How do you, how do you match Hall? him up? Yeah, that's what he said. He said no one wants to fight him. I mean, he's, he's like a, the ultimate specialist, right? He's, There's you know. no problem finding fights around here. We can find Hall fights. We can get Hall fights. And, uh, and last thing, uh, Nick Diaz, I believe, said recently that he's actually not going to fight George Masvidal uh, on that card in March in, in Las Vegas. He said he's not doing it, Nick Diaz. Any, any response, any, any clarification on that? I think that's pretty clear. All you got to do is watch his Instagram. I don't think it looks like he's training for a fight. So that, so that fight's not happening. That's, that's, that's yeah, it. no. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, Dana. Yeah. Uh, so Cyborg was really the only featherweight fighter pretty much. She and, and Megan Anderson were really the, the original featherweights in that division. Now that Amanda is the featherweight champion, do you have her defend that belt? Do you hire new girls to fight on that division? What's the future for that division? I don't know. I got I to gotta figure that out. I, got, I need to talk to Amanda and, and see what she wants to do, and, uh, and we'll figure it out. Uh, you said that you, you saw that fight going kind of what it went and, and Amanda winning. Why were you uh, confident that Amanda had what it takes, what it took to, to take out Cyborg? Well, I, I didn't say that I saw that fight going that way 
and, and Amanda wins. What I said was, I, I, when I, I called that the fight of the night. I thought that was going to be fight of the night because that's exactly the way I thought the fight would go, that those guys would be blasting each other from bell to bell until somebody fell down. Um, and, and obviously Amanda came out and made it quick. But I expected that to be that type of a fight is what I was saying. Sorry, I misunderstood. That's okay. Um, now, I have a question about the UFC event in Fortaleza. Jose Aldo uh, is now on that card against Renato Moicano, but that's built the co-main event to Rafael Assunção against Marlon Moraes. Why is that? Why isn't Jose Aldo the main event for that event? I agree with you 100%, sir. He wanted to be the co-main event. He didn't want to fight five rounds. He wanted three. So, so it was Aldo who asked for Correct. the co-main event? Right. Right. I agree with you. That should be the main event, five rounds, and should be the fight. But he said, I want a three-round fight. And you don't say no to Jose Aldo. Do you, are those two fights, Rafael versus Marlon and Jose Aldo versus Moicano, uh, number one contender fights? Um, I, I don't know if I'd call them. Obviously, the, the Sun Seau fight is, yeah. That's a number one contender fight. And uh, lastly, uh, I want to ask about something that you were saying during the summer that the morning weigh-ins were gone and that you guys were going back to just having the, the ceremonial weigh-ins be the official weigh-ins. Right. Since then, you haven't mentioned anything and it, and it stayed all throughout the year. What That's happened? That's a good question. I don't remember what the hell happened to that. You're right. I forgot about that. I, I, don't, I don't remember what happened. It, do, does it mean that the morning weigh-ins I, I think that a lot stays? of people were complaining about it, the fighters and stuff, and, and, and maybe we just said, okay, then we won't do it. I don't remember exactly, though. We could find out from my people. I don't remember exactly what happened, but I think that was what happened. And, and do the, the, the flyweight division stays after, after Cejudo versus we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Dana, you just mentioned that um, the Stockholm cards are typically pretty crazy. Are there any plans to expand to any of the other Nordic countries? For instance, uh, Finland has Makwana Amerikani, Temo Pakalan. Uh, a number of different countries have really active and excitable fights. Yeah, I say this all the time. I mean, we're going to go everywhere. We're going to continue to go everywhere. And some of the things that I said earlier we're working on for, for 19 and 20, I, 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 I say this every year, but every year we take the sport to another level. We literally take it to another level every year. Um, and I, ha I have to say that this year, the stuff that we're working on is going to be our most progressive year in the history of the company. We got a couple things we need to get through here in the next several months, which I'm very confident will happen. And uh, we're going to blow your minds again. I'm looking forward to it. Are there any specific plans for countries like Finland, though? No, not right now. Uh, off the top of my head. Thank you. Um, there's a guy named Pete Dropic who, who handles all of our venues, uh, venues and scheduling, and we all get in a room, we sit down, we start looking at different places, what's available, when, what fighters are available for those shows, and we make decisions to move into a new city or a new country or, you know, whatever it might be. So a lot of that stuff isn't in place yet. We're still working on it, especially now with ESPN. Um, Schedule is actually tougher to make with ESPN because these guys are wall to wall with, you know, with sports. Um, Dana, it sounds like you do have a lot of exciting stuff coming up next year. When you look back on 2018, though, I mean, there there were some some highs and some obviously some some difficult times in general. I mean, how, how do you characterize 2018? For that was a great year. I th I feel it was a great year for us, a great year for the sport. Our last year with Fox. In a seven-year deal, these guys were amazing to us. It, it was a really great relationship. It was, it, it was fun. And, uh, and then as far as, as far as Lowe's, this is a crazy-ass business we're in. I mean, we just moved this event in three days. You know, it just, there's always something going on here. This, this, this business is worse than a hair salon, man. It's, it's so much drama and crazy bullshit in this business, but it's part of what makes it so fun, too. And then obviously there's a, a big card coming up in Australia with Volkanovski's win. I mean, Robert Whitaker is obviously a, a big star doing amazing things. Yeah. What, what can you sort of, you know, point out that, that you guys did so right in that market? To um, it, listen, uh, Australia are, is full of fight fans, man. That whole area over there is insane. And that's another one. I can't remember because it feels like it was three years ago to me. But we put that thing on sale and it sold out in, in like a day or hours or something. I, I can't remember how fast, but it sold out so fast. You know, Israel, 
versus Anderson Silva, and then obviously the main event with Whitaker and, and Gaslam. That card is going to be sick. I'm flying over there for that one. I can't wait. And, uh, you know, for those of you from the media that have never seen a fight live in Australia, trust me, go to this event. The crowd is insane. It's, it's going to be a very, very fun event. I hope I answered your question. Dana, one of the first things that Amanda Nunes said is, uh, Dana, I have to be in a Hall of Fame. What's your comments on it? She said, Dana, I have to be in the Hall of Fame? Yeah. You're a little young lady. Calm down. <laughs> Slow down. She's obviously going to be in the Hall of Fame eventually. She's, she's the greatest female fighter ever. That's the first thing she said. And yeah. also a question. A lot of fighters from Russia, they have a problem getting a visa to America. Would you like uh, them fight in other countries? Or will we see more of UFC events in Russia? Well, it's, it's not like we've, we've, we've never had issues before, you know, getting people into the country and, and all these different things. We have, we have our, our team that works on that does an incredible job. Um, and, yeah, if we usually have those issues with people, we'll put them in fights in other, you know, you can fight in England or you can fight over here, you can fight over there. We, we figure it out. Will we see more uh, UFC events in Russia in 2019? Yes. Thank you. We good? You done with me? Oh, this guy. Go ahead. Hi, hi Dana. Um, just wanted to ask you if there was any sort of contingency plan in place in case Nevada is ready to suspend John Jones when they reconvene. I don't think that happens. I don't think that happens. I told, I mean, listen, if that was the case with Nevada, if Nevada was seriously concerned about it, the re reality is Nevada couldn't do a hearing. They could have done it on Friday. And I talked about with this some, guy, some guys the other day. I'm a degenerate gambler, but I ain't that much of a gambler, okay? I wasn't willing to risk that. Um, if I have an ace and the dealer has an ace, I'm taking even money all day. So we moved the thing to California. They could have stopped us from moving to California. They could have told California they weren't comfortable with it. I don't see John Jones having a problem getting a license in, in, in Nevada. He didn't do anything wrong. Gut, gut feeling or lines of communication open with Nevada right now about uh, what, what you can expect when they reconvene? I don't, yeah, I don't know what to expect, but I would be blown away if they didn't give him a license to fight in Nevada. It makes no sense. Makes no sense at all. We good? Yeah, go ahead, buddy. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> hey, Dana. So, you know, you and Oscar have been sparring again and uh -huh. back and forth. <laughs> um, what's really at the source of your conflicts here? What, what started, first of all, this all started with him telling people not to watch Mayweather versus McGregor. Who does that, you know? Um, then he came out and said that, you know, all, all, he basically lied about what guys had been paid, what we were paying fighters, what Chuck Liddell made, what Tito made. He's a liar. And I called him out for being a piece of shit and a liar, basically. And, um, you know, he's, he's said that he's going to try to take over with his MMA, of course. And you've talked about boxing. Are you still trying to get into it? Now you're with Roy Jones. Wait till you see what we do this year. Wait till you see what happens with Oscar De La Hoya in the next three years. So what's your prediction for the zone? Listen, you guys know me, man. You've, some of you have known me for a long time. You want a battle? I'm your guy. I'm your guy. Let's do it. Good? Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it.